All right. What's going on, people? Michael G. Davis here with Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm, and I would like to welcome you to uh, our first for sale by owner analysis. Uh, this is something that I want to start doing. My give back to the industry uh, for being here in real estate for so long. Now, look, I may not know a lot of things, but what I do know is real estate. And there's a lot of people that are wanting to do it on their own and sell their properties by themselves. So I thought maybe going on Zillow and looking at some of these properties, giving a realtor's eye on some of these properties will be good. So here we go. Michael G. Davis, and this is real estate. Now, this is going to be on our YouTube channel. So I uh, definitely want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like things such as maybe you're considering selling your home and you want somebody to sit there and analyze that bad boy and see kind of what the method is that we utilize as realtors uh, or maybe you're purchasing a property right and hey you may be interested in purchasing the for sale by owner that i'm going to be looking at so uh it's a great way hey subscribe to the channel uh you may be thinking about getting into real estate uh we're always looking to add agents so hey subscribe to our channel you'll get an inside look at what we do at brooks and davis um, the type of things that we get into and type of properties that we look at and the type of properties that we sell so subscribe look in the right hand corner you'll see our little logo if you click on it press that subscribe button then you will officially be a part of the brooks and davis network so subscribe now before we jump into this thing i'm talking to my buyers right you may be, because we're going to send this thing out, you may be looking to purchase a home. And again, you may be interested in purchasing this particular home right here uh, that I'm going to look at. Uh, I have reached out to a lot of these individuals. They are a part of our for sale by owner inventory in addition to what we are able to pull up on HAR. But hey, we have a lot of things that we offer to someone who wants to buy a home. Um, we have our three sheets, which is uh, for all of our buyer clients. It's a frequently asked questions. Uh, don't do this sheet and then uh, this will most likely happen sheet is something that we send out to all our new buyer clients to deal with the uncertainty of the home buyer process huh? uh, we also have a uh, access to a lease with a right to purchase program for individuals that have a particular house that you want to buy uh, but you're you're personally not in a position whether that's through credit whether that's through debt whether that's not through enough money saved up or whatever you can't get a loan and get it well, we have a program that can put you in the home. You can rent it. Uh, and these are homes that are not on the market for, for rent. They're only for sale. Put you in there, give you up to three years to purchase it. So we have that. We have 25 plus traditional and non-traditional home financing options for you, right? Uh, there's no one size fits all when somebody's looking to get a loan. Even there's owner finance options that's in there. So we have multiple access to multiple opportunities. Uh, every week we do pre-home buyer sessions. Those are for individuals that want to get an understanding of the home buying process as well as again if you're not there yet and being able to get approved for a loan we have apartments and rental homes that we can put you in as well so uh, that's my shout out to my buyers who are you know maybe looking at this video because you saw in the little tagline that we're going to be analyzing a property and that's just something that you're interested in knowing about so let's jump in this thing all right um, the very first thing that we want to do is hey Let's go to Zillow, right? Because that's where, and and I'm uh, the property, the for sale by owners that I'm looking at properties are on Zillow. So the first one we're going to look at is this property on Quinby, Quinby Avenue, right? And if you go in Zillow, you type the address, and they pop up, right? So this property is currently for rent, twenty six hundred dollars a month. Uh, now, in speaking with this individual, they are open to selling the property for nine hundred and ninety five thousand dollars now that does seem rather it may seem rather steep but we are talking about west university west university is a very prominent uh neighborhood uh inside of the loop right so this is how it looks on zillow for this particular property uh, you know here's the description great neighborhood uh, uh friendly neighbors walking distance to the village one of the nicest quadrants in West U, corner lot, never has flooded on lease. All right, so here we go. As far as the two things that go into selling a property, uh, pitch, pictures 
in the description. And pictures, this particular one only has two pictures, so you want to maximize that. Um, I don't know how many pictures Zillow gives you. I know with HAR, when we're putting our listings on the market, we can put up to 32 pictures. But the, the, the pictures in the description are supposed to convince the buyer to come want to take a look at it. Now, not necessarily for them to buy it, but for them to want to see the inside, for them to want to learn more about it. So that's the description. That's the price. Um, you know, this is, again, all of this is on Zillow. So you can go to Zillow, type that address in there. And obviously they want you to know about it. So this is, in addition, giving additional exposure for the property. So if you're interested, uh, here's the seller, Miss Pat Malone. Give that number a call. It is currently still for rent and uh or sell and you know she'll sell it to you okay so it's uh those are that's the information about what to do and then zillow gives you some cool stuff right it, you know three tells you about it three bedrooms the uh, year built what type of property is it's a bungalow uh the lot size 5250 so here's all the information on zillow about our property at 29 uh, 31 Quinby Street. All right. So now check this out. Like I said, I am going to analyze. I want to analyze this property as a real estate age as a realtor. Right. So there's a number of tools. There's a, uh, you know, mechanisms or methods that we use to do this. And I'm going to kind of go through some of those things to give you some insight. All right. Now, uh, everything that we do or that I do is based on this pamphlet that we put together. It's a consumer pamphlet called I Believe. Now, I Believe is geared towards people understanding the services that come from a really good real estate uh, company um, and as far as how we earn the commission that we receive. Now, when I say that everything's based on it, it's based on the beginning pages. Now, this is just the first set of the booklet. There are other things in the booklet, but um, this is just the beginning pages. It all starts with the six areas of what all it takes to actually sell a house. So that's the premise of this booklet. If you are interested in it, then uh, uh, email us. I'll ha I have my email in the comment section. You can email us or you can call us in the comment section and we'll make sure that we get this booklet sent to you. Now, the, uh, the six areas, the first area is buyer comes across the home. So that's where you utilize Zillow, right? H-A-R, sign, other mechanism. So that's the first area, the first step. Then after that, the buyer gets a desire to see the inside. Now, we already talked about that. The price does that. Pictures do that. Description do that. It gives them the desire to want to see it, right? So then the, the third area is the buyer gets into the home meaning that they get into the inside of the property that's the third area all right so now after that after the buyer gets into the or sees the inside of the home then that's the the next step is the buyer wanting to submit a purchase offer so first you got to make sure that they can easily get in into into the home second you want to make sure that the home condition gets them to fall in love with the property because then that's what's going to make them want to submit an offer, which is the fourth area. The fifth area is buyer needs to agree on terms of the purchase agreement. And then the final one is that you, throughout the process from contract to close, you have to maintain the buyer's commitment to purchasing the home. So everything that we're going to talk about is based on, and everything that we do as far as selling a home is based on these six areas that, again, that you can find in this booklet that we have. Okay. So um, the next thing is, before I show you that, is we do for our listings what's called a pre-marketing strategy, right? And that's what we come together and we, the goal of the pre-marketing strategy meeting is to determine the best uh, buyer for this particular, for any particular property, right? So uh, what I'm finna, what I'm going to show you now is an actual form or the checklist that we use within that pre-marketing strategy meeting, all right? Now, I'm not going to go through the whole form um, because then I would have you guys here all night and I don't want to do that. Um, but we are going to look at some things. We're going to look at median household income. Um, we're going to look at the median. All right, we're going to look at the uh, maybe the list price, sold price. We'll do a CMA, a market, at, market analysis. 
uh, we'll look at the schools and maybe some of the area. Uh, and then we'll maybe talk about some buyers that we will put on our prospective buyer, buyers list. Um, but for every one of our, our properties, this is a form or this is a meeting that we do to determine the best buyer for a particular property. Okay. So now, although that's just the checklist, here are some of the places that we go to get the questions answered about some of the areas that I just showed you on this pre-marketing checklist. All right. So now for our particular property, uh, we're going to start off with the household income, the demographics. Now, where we go is a place called Point to Homes. And Point to Homes allows you to, if you go to uh, we'll put in a zip code. So we do it based on zip code. The zip code for this property is 77005. I'm going to click search. Now, when I click search, right here in the right hand corner, it says tools. Click on demographics, and it'll give me the demographics for that particular zip code. So now, why do I, why do I go there? I go there because it helps me with understanding household income that that property is in, the age of the people that are living in that community, the main familiar di dynamic type of employees that are there. I can get all that information from points to homes. So for 2931 Quimby, uh, which is the home, you can see that you can see the marital stairs, the majority of people that live in that zip code are married, right? So that gives you an idea of the kind of buyer that you're going to be dealing with. It uh, gives you an idea of average household income is north of $220,000 a year, uh, median household income. So you're dealing with an upper bracket of buyer. So median household net worth is a little over $800,000, and median home sale price is about $670,000. And then they spend about $131,000. So it gives you a lot of information as far as the demographic. Again, you want to use that information to determine the type of buyer that will be purchasing your particular property. So that's why we go there and it's a part of our pre-home buyer, I mean, our pre-marketing strategy meet. All right, so then the next step um, is that we're going we're gonna to want to look at the schools, right? We want to see what kind of school, schools and neighborhoods is why people buy. So if I'm selling a property, I have to make sure that if my schools or a good selling point or selling piece, I want that to be in my marketing for the particular property. So now uh, Zillow does, let's go back to Zillow. Zillow does give you the school names, right? So if you go here to Zillow and if you go down to nearby schools, Zillow gives you all three of the schools. It gives you the pre-K, elementary school, the middle school, and the high school, and you can um, take that, um, and it, so you'll know the names. And then they, Google gives you the little rating, so this is 10 out of 10, 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10. Now, I don't know, uh, I mean, I don't know what this is all about. It looks like greatschools.org is how the rating is determined, but because I'm a realtor, right, uh, I'm a realtor. Shout out to the Houston Association of Realtors that gives us awesome tools. I'm going to go into the school finder inside of the HAR website dashboard, take those school names and see if I can get some additional information about the schools. All right. So the first school is West University Elementary. That's the first school. So we're going to take that school. We're going to copy it. And uh, boom, here's our school finder. So now, look, this is the interesting thing. Although that I gave that big shout out to the Houston Association of Realtors, you do not have to be a realtor to have access to the school finder, right? So you can, um, this isn't the back dashboard for us. So I'm, I'm putting in West University Elementary School. And look, this school is phenomenal, right? It gives you how many stars. It gives you how many um, uh, um, the rating for this particular school. I guess it's designations or distinctions. 
Um, so look, out of it's four out of four. It's increased. Look at how it's increased over the last year as far as its school index. It has six out of seven designations as an elementary school. So this is clearly a major selling point for any property that is zoned to this particular school. So you 100% want to put that in your marketing that from an elementary standpoint, it, this home is positioned next to an excellent elementary school. All right, so now let's go and look at the middle school and we're gonna do the same thing. So it's Persian Middle School. And with Persian Middle School, we can go into the school finder. Right. So we know that we have an excellent elementary school. So let's go back into the school finder. Persian Middle School. Let's see how our middle school stacks up. Okay, so it has a little less designations, but it, it has four stars. So it's a four star school, three designations. And again, performance index four out of four, all green arrows. We like that. You know, it doesn't have as many designations as the other school. But again, you can look through the demographics, see how what the staff uh, teacher experiences, how much experience a, a teacher has in the school. And this is a this is a great school. All right. So now let's look at the high school. Let's see. Now, look, Zillow said it's a six out of 10. But what does that really tell you? You know, I, I say you should go to the H.A.R. school finder and you can get so much more information as far as if it's a good school or not. So now let's look at Lamar High School. Again, we're gonna do the same thing. Put it in our put it in the school finder. And let's see what they say about Lamar. Okay, look, so Lamar High School, four star, it's a four star school. Well, it gave me multiple Lamar High Schools. Okay, here we go. So it's a four, four star school. It has designations as well. So five out of seven, as far as designations, four for four performance. So it gives you all that information. So in essence, 2931 Quimby is by some excellent schools. You do not want to uh, not have that in your marketing because that right there is going to be a major selling point to somebody that's wanting to buy in that area or somebody that's wanting to rent in that area. So it's very key that you include that in your marketing. All right, something else that's very important is amenities. So uh, on our pre-marketing, during our pre-marketing strategy meeting on our checklist, we look at things that are in the area because again, people care about schools, they care about neighborhoods, they care about the area. So what we use for determining what is close to a property is a website called Walk Score, and it'll give you this score as far as the walkability of a particular property, but it'll also point out to you what's close to it. All right. So all you have to do is type in the address 2931 Quinby. Okay. And here we go. So uh, it's saying it says that the walk score is a 22, and I believe that that's out of 100. So just as far as walkability, right? So it just it's telling you that um, as far as getting to different places, to downtown, the minutes that it takes. But if you click on map, it tells you what's nearby. So I think this is this is pretty awesome. It get, it tells you where the the house is, right? And then you can look at the restaurants um, that are nearby and it tells you how far they are from the home, right? So Bex Prime Rib is the closest restaurant to the home and then it gives you multiple restaurants. Uh, you can look at coffee shops, bars, grocery stores, parks, schools, right? Shopping, entertainment, errands, uh, and it'll pull, it up, it'll pull up on the map where all these different places are and you can um, take some off put some on so again walkscore.com allows you to in your marketing right in your marketing put in there some of the highlights what's this what's it close to what are some of the you know uh 
world-renowned restaurants that it's close to? What's some of the shopping or grocery stores that it's close to? Keep in mind, uh, Houston has a number of people that are relocating into the city year after year. So it would be great to know if somebody is relocating from a different state that a particular property is close to so many things. So it's very important that you know that when marketing and putting your home out there for sale for people to see. So all of those things that we've gone through is in our pre, a part of our pre-marketing strategy meeting. Okay, so now let's do this. After we determine all of that, which helps us with our marketing, pricing is very important as well as competition and activity. You need to know who you're competing with. So now, unfortunately, every, every not unfortunately, everything else that I just showed you, you have access to uh, without being licensed. So you don't have you do not have to be a, a licensed agent to have access to those things. Now, what you do have to be licensed to have access to what I'm about, what I'm showing you now, which is the system or the software that by being a member of the Houston Association of Realtors, we have access to to pull up data that the public does not have access to, all right? So um, I've already put together the search and I've mapped out the area that 2931 Quimby is in. Now you see all this activity, all of this activity is currently going on. What's green is currently active. What's red is already sold. Um, what's orange is under contract. So right now that's 134 properties that are between the two major thoroughfares of Kirby, um, Buffalo Speedway, no, I'm sorry, Buffalo Speedway, Greenbrier, and um, University, and what's my northern boundary? Bissonette, right? So again, you, you don't do zip codes. I know a lot of people will put a zip code in there and try to determine the value of a property based on zip code. It's too wide of a, uh, it's too wide of an area to use that. So you want to hone in some, but even within this square block, you have 134 properties for sale or rent uh, homes. All right. So like, now, even if we hone in, right, because we go to where our property is, we can look. Here's Quinby Street and there's 2931. Okay. So 2931 is right there. So let's see what's around it. Uh, we had a $1.5 million home sale within the last six months. Um, and you know, if we click, if we look, we can see, we click on it. We can see what these, look, the lot size is the 3,400 square foot home. The lot size is 5,250. So this, again, I'm giving you insights as far as being a real estate agent, what I would look like, what I would look at to determine value. So remember 2931, she's asking 995,000 for the property. That's what she's asking. And uh, she's looking to rent it for currently $2,600. Right? So now as a, as a real estate professional, I would look at this and say, this sold in the last six months. And I'm just going to do one, but I will do this with multiple properties. It was days on market, 14 days on market. Uh, they originally had it on the market for $1.6 million, um, but they sold it eventually for $1.5 million. The lot size is 5250 which is the same lot size as Quinby. I want to say I looked at it already. Yeah, so it's the same lot size as our property at 2931 Quinby. Um, so something else that I would do is that if that's the case, because obviously somebody tore the house, the original house down and built a new house. So we can tell that. So what I would do is say, okay, if somebody wants to do the same thing with 2931 Quinby and they want to build their forever home, then what could I sell the lot for, right? So, well, when I look at the tax records and the tax records had it assessed at 1.4 million is what it had it assessed at. And they said the land was 588,000. So what that's telling me is, is that a lot in an area close to Quimby, the lot, and if they just want to sell it for lot value, the most they could sell it for 
is around, you know, 580, 600,000. That's kind of what the value of a lot would be at. So that's something else that I would look at as a, as a realtor uh, to determine value. Remember, we're trying to determine value as far as the property and if it just kind of makes sense. And then again, this gives us some, an idea of what's going on around the, um, our, our property. Okay, so that, that's the Quimby. I mean, I'm, and that one's on Quimby. And again, it's sold in the last six months. All right, so remember, we are here, 2931. All right, so we have that property. It was a three bedroom, two bath for rent. It rented, because remember, red is it's, it's done. It rented for $4,600 a month. All right, here's another one that's sold, a four bedroom, four bath, $1.7 million. Um, here's a, a four bedroom, two bath that rented for $3,000 a month. And she's asking twenty. Six hundred for a three bedroom, one bath. Twenty six hundred for a three bedroom, one and a half bath, and uh, she's competing with properties that are uh, forty six, three thousand. This is a four bedroom for four hundred dollars more per month. Four bedroom, two bath. What you're competing with? Uh, three bedroom, two bath. For twenty five hundred dollars a month, that's what they're compete. That's what she's competing with. So you got to keep that in mind when you are putting things on the on the market, right? So that that gives you a little bit of insight of the activity. So now what we want to do is hone it in some more. And um, okay, so yeah, so we we looked at the Quinby. All right, so you want to hone it in some more. That just kind of gave us an, a view of the area, uh, kind of like a bird's eye view. But we want to hone in some more and kind of get an idea of, you know, again, what we're competing with and how to position the property as far as pricing. Remember, uh, $2,600 a month is what she's asking on Zillow. $995,000 for sale is what she's asking. Okay, so when we hone in and we we look, we pull up houses that are, around 1,400 square feet, between 1,400 and 1,500 square feet, three bedroom, you know, ours is one and a half bath, then we can start seeing um, what is more comparable and kind of where we need to be positioned. So this two bedroom, one bath, at least for 2,800, three bedroom, two bath, at least for 2,500, but now keep in mind, it was on the market for 102 days. Um, this is pending, 1,400 square foot, three bedroom, one bath. Now it's pending at 899,000, but we don't know if it's gonna sell for that amount. That just means that's what the price was listed at the time that it went under contract. And then here's another three bedroom, two baths. It's been on the market for 186 days, 949,000. And then this one sold for 824,000. So now I'm not gonna do it now because I don't wanna keep you guys here for all night but if you know if i'm i would dig more deep in and i would click on all of these and see what was it what was the description was it a rehab property what was the year built on these properties to see what how it truly compared to my property that i'm looking at as far as assessing value so i would go even deeper in uh looking at these properties um even if i, if I pick up you know if i do a map view again you can see it's within our lines, right? And our Quimby property, here's Quimby Street. It's 2930. So I think this is 31. So that's 2931. So even the stuff that's close. So there's 20 that $2,500 for lease. That lease is it's in walking distance to this one. And then this one for sale, 949. It's, it's not far, 824. So we will look to see going uh, more depth when looking at the property okay all right so again we're looking at value trying to determine what um the best way to position the property right and now even so now we we've kind of looked at a number of things to try to identify the right buyer right and you have to do that if you're going to be intentional about moving the property so um, one of the things that we do 
you know, for our listeners in the office is you'll get people that are calling. So now if you're successful at your marketing, you got pictures, you got the description, you got it priced right. Uh, you know, you're pushing it. People are calling. Well, follow up is key, especially with agents. You know, one of the things that we do for our listings, we call it preschooler uh, prospect persistence. I'm sorry. Preschooler persistence on our follow up. The reason I call it that is because I got some preschool kids and whenever they want something, they never stop asking for it. So if somebody calls on your property and it's a prospective buyer or if it's an agent represent somebody, look, it may take you a couple of conversations to determine if these people are going to move forward on your property or not. It's most it's not done with the first call, right? It's not done with the first time that they see the property. It's going to have to be multiple times. Hey, are you interested? Are you going to put a contract on my house? Hey, are you interested? What do you think? What do you want to do? Have you talked to your husband? Have you talked to your, uh, your wife? You know, how do you want to proceed? Have they thought about it? Like it's going to take that constant, constant, constant persistence in the follow-up until somebody says, Hey, stop calling me. Stop being a jerk. Right. Another thing is remember one of the six areas was getting the buyer in the home and then the condition of the home, putting it in such a place where they want to buy it. What we do at our office is we do these area visits. So we'll go out and we'll check the area. Again, we looked at our walk score, but sometimes, you know, to hone in on your description, you need to go drive the area and really put in your own words, paint the picture, paint the story for a prospective buyer. We also do these uh, three week refresh for vacant properties. Cause guess what? If nobody's living in the house, it gets stale, it gets cold, it gets uh, dusty. So you need to periodically be going to that thing. If you've moved out, but you're trying to sell it, well, you got to be going back and you got to mop up the floors. You got to sweep. You'll get dead bugs in the house. You'll get dust on the ceiling thing. You better dust that thing up. Um, you need to clean the, the windows, dust the front porch. You got to, when a buyer comes and see it, you never know when they're going to come. And that buyer that would have bought your home, if it hadn't been clean, would have bought it. But because they came and they saw a dead cockroach all over the floor, they didn't buy it. So that's why you got to periodically go um, and uh, keep an eye on it, right? And then again, like in the beginning, I showed with working with buyers, these non-traditional programs. Well, with, you know, what we do is that we take those programs and we connect it to the property that we're selling, right? So like, for instance, at 2931 Quinby, in the marketing, we would say, use one of our non-traditional mortgage programs like owner finance, owner finance is being offered, right? Or the home, the uh, right to purchase, uh, uh, the lease with the right to purchase program. You can do a lease with the right to purchase and connect that partner that with the marketing that goes out for this particular property to attract or connect maybe a buyer that can't go in, tra in traditional uh methods for getting pre-approved for this particular price point what i would look at is uh one of our mortgage products that a person maybe is a business owner and their taxes or they don't really show the total picture of their what they can afford well there are loan products out there that go based off a of bank statement and you don't have to submit tax returns well this would be a perfect product to partner with a home that's you know, in the higher price point, $800,000, $900,000, because that's probably the kind of buyer that you may run into. Um, and then, you know, something else that we do, maybe not necessarily for, well, maybe for this property, we do an investor disposition review to where we break this thing down to, to show an investor who may want to come in and knock the house down, build another house, and then sell that house for a profit we can show them a strategy or uh, a setup on how they can do that and put a test that with the marketing because maybe we'll get that kind of buyer uh, in interested by showing them the level of value they can get by, by, by selling the house. Right. So um, these were, these were just a few of the ways and the techniques that we uh, go about uh, doing research on properties, right? Um, again, I'm going to be doing these periodically, just pulling, you know, a for sale by owner that's open to being a part of our for sale by owner inventory. 
and I'll do a breakdown like this and just give my insights, you know, from a real estate standpoint to that individual for them to um, have some takeaways. Now, uh, before I let you guys go, um, if you are a sale by owner and you're selling your home on your own, we do have a couple of programs that don't require you paying a 6% commission. Uh, one of them is our dating for sale by owner uh, program. And uh, if you're interested, it's a program, no, no cost or no commitment, right? You know, the only time that you would pay us is if we were to bring a buyer and most for sale by owners are okay with paying 3% if we bring a buyer to them. Um, but, you know, we'll do some additional marketing for you as far as on our website and our Facebook page. Uh, we'll give you access to our hotline. So if you have any questions while you're marketing your property, any real estate questions, you can call us. We can answer those for you. Uh, even if you need assistance, you need a lockbox on there, you need assistance showing properties, you know, we'll do that for you as well. Field buyer calls if you get those. So there's a number of things that we'll do for you uh, without you signing a listing agreement and uh, committing to a 6% commission um, for a 6% commission for us selling your house. So that's, that's something that we do. Uh, also, we have a Facebook page called Houston for Sale by Owner. Uh, go and like the page. If you're a for sale by owner, you can put your property on it. Uh, you can put your property on the fa on that Facebook page uh, for marketing purposes. You know, we post things like open houses and you know other for sale by owner properties uh, have have been posted on there. Like different for sale by owner properties are already being posted. Talk about our open houses. So um, go to the page, like the page, uh, and if you're a for sale by owner, you can add your property uh, to that page as well. Um, again, just a quick recap of um, from a buyers. You know, if you're again, if you're you're looking at these videos because you're in the market to purchase a home, then um, you know these are the things that we offer. Someone who wants to buy a home, we offer a lot of things. So if you're interested email us, uh, give us a call at the office and uh, we will help you. We will answer your questions. We will do what we can. Same thing if, again, if you're interested in selling your home or uh, if you're interested in becoming an agent. And the final thing, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw here. If you want more, uh, get into the mind of a realtor, uh, someone that knows real estate, then subscribe to our YouTube channel right there on the right. Or once the video is over, you'll get an opportunity to subscribe and go ahead and join the channel. I'm going to be sending out more content. We send out content consistently and um, we love to keep you entertained. Uh, with that being said, it's Michael G. Davis. Um, I may not know a lot, but what I do know is real estate and this is real estate. You guys have a great one. We're talking to you.